He's purring very loudly. There you go. Hello. <coughs> hey. Hey. Be nice. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Pharaohs. When I came out to the garage, I realized that the boxes that the traps came in are perfect to cut down for the pieces of cardboard to put in the traps. So I just um, cut out this part and then I just had to cut it down because it was too wide. Um, so I used that instead of the other box that I was going to tear up because I could always use my other box for shipping. And here's what's going on. I also cut a piece of the rug for the bottom and then I put the cardboard on top. And what I have here is some cooked chicken because that's what I've been using. And then here is some leftover food um, that I was feeding Sammy and Richard. Um, that's some of the Tiki Cat sardines with some cooked chicken and then I also added some dry food. So this is here. Um, when this is eaten, then I'll give them a platter of food. But I'm not going to put a platter of food out until they eat this. And it is kind of windy out and that's another reason why the cardboard is more helpful than like newspaper or even the training pads because those are lighter and they'll blow around. Um, like the first time the chicken blew off. Um, the cardboard is heavier, so hopefully it's not going to blow around as much. So I'm going to go inside. Oh, okay. Here's is that Ringo or Little Eva? Somebody stole a piece of chicken off the end. I think this is Ringo. And I think when I go inside, he'll come back and eat the food, which is good. The trap is not set. It's not going to go off. I have it set up backwards. Also, um, Sammy and Richard are watching from the window. So I hope they're not getting too upset or anything. And there's Ziggy. She's been walking around looking for food also. Hello Ringo. How are you? You good? You gonna eat the food? Okay, I'll go inside. You can come and eat, okay? So there's Ringo. He just went in and got another piece of chicken. Maybe he'll go in and eat the rest. Yeah, there he goes. So this is what we want. We want them to feel comfortable going in like nothing bad's going to happen. Now we have to remember also that Ringo did not witness um, Sammy or Richard getting trapped. Um, Nancy witnessed it and Ziggy witnessed it. So potentially him, Goldie and little Eva would be the easiest to trap because they didn't see anything. So hopefully he'll go back in and just realize it's a safe spot, it's a safe place. There he goes. Yeah, they go in and they pull it out. They're not stupid. They're like, I'm not eating it in here, I don't trust it. Okay, who's that? That's one of the torties neck behind him. When he finally gets to the plate, then it's a successful catch. He's still not there yet. He's eating the chicken, pulling it out. He pulls it out and then he eats it under the feeding table. Is he going to go back and eat from the bowl, from the plate? You eat from the plate. Here he goes. There and boom. That would have been a trap. So that is good. So I'll give him a while to eat that and we'll see if he does. And I'll put more out. I think what I'm going to do is go back out to the garage and set up the other trap just like this one um, with cardboard and a rug as soon as he's done eating. And then I'll put it out right next to this one so they'll get more comfortable going in. Because it's gonna get harder and harder with each cat. The first one's the easiest, second one is a little bit harder, the third one's gonna be a little bit harder, and uh, you'll just see how it goes. Again, I'm just taking things one day at a time. 
Plans could change it any day. Oh, maybe, maybe that's little Eva in the trap because this looks like Ringo, but this could be little Eva. It's hard to tell because of the lighting. No, that's little Eva outside the trap. Ringo's inside the trap. Once he's done eating, I'll put the other trap together. And then I'll put plates of food in both. It just sounded like the trap went off, but there's no way because it's not set. So I looked outside and whoever was in it, if that was Ringo, he ran off. And now there's Eva. Is she going to go in it? Is she going to go in and look to see what's going on? There she goes. There she goes. She's at the plate. Boom. Second cat trapped. But I really can only do one. I don't think I could do two at once. It's just too hectic. Like, if this was all I was doing, if I was just a professional cat trapper and this is, like, my full-time thing, then I'd be able to do things much better. Also, if I had things more organized inside, like I mentioned before. If I had more space, that that is the key issue, much more than organization, because things were organized, but they're just being rearranged because there's not enough space. All right, so she's eating. I'm gonna go in the garage and set up another one. So here's what's going on now. I have two traps with plates of food in them. And I also put out a platter of food. And it's some um, of the canned food from Tractor Supply, along with some crunchies. Now the food in the traps is the homemade raw food along with some crunchies. And that's what they're getting for now. If they eat all of that, then I might put a little bit more on the platter. There's Goldie. Is she going to go in and eat it? I figure they're going to eat off the platter first, but that will at least attract them to the area. And then they'll p potentially go in the traps to eat what's in there. Goldie's looking at it. There it goes. Ziggy, she's coming in the back. So who are we missing? We're, mi we're missing Nancy and Ringo. Like, obviously they know something's up because Sammy and Richard have not been around. Hey, Goldie. So I'm going to go in. The, um, the inside cats want to eat. So when I refer to the inside cats, that's Stella Boo, Splash, and Zimba. When I refer to the kittens, it's... Um, Richard and Sammy then these are the outside cats so the easy thing to do is to TNR them meaning trap them neuter them and then just return them outside after 24 to 48 hours that's the easy thing to do the question is is it the right thing to do oh there she goes there's Goldie. Boom. Trapped. So three of the cats would have been trapped. But that's good. The reason why I want to train them with two of the traps is because... I mean, it would be nice to be able to do two at once, although it would be even more hectic than it is now. But my concern is as we get down to the last, you know, two or three cats, it's going to be more difficult, so... She's actually sitting in there and eating and feeling pretty calm. So anyway, what I was saying is the easy thing to do is just to TNR the cats, to trap them, to neuter them, and then to just bring them back out here and, and then let them live their lives, you know, out here. But they're really young. They're not even a year old. And so far, Sammy and Richard have been really easy to socialize them to the point that they're at now. I mean, Sammy's probably friendlier to me than Splash is. Um, you know, I'm living with a feral cat every day. I mean, Splash has been inside for more than six years now, and he's still, like, really skittish. It's, you know, he's, he's a strange cat because sometimes 
he's like super friendly, wants a million pets, like when it's time for crunchies and everything. But then other times during the day, like he doesn't want anything to do with me. Like he'll hide and he'll hiss. But it's always just because if I approach him, then he'll not be happy. But if he approaches me, then he's happy. So that's why I just, I let it be what it is. And then I try to work on him whenever I can, just really gradually. But I don't know if he's ever going to come around. And Sammy's already like more friendly to me more of the time than he is practically. And Richard is just so easygoing. He reminds me so much of Simba. He's just perfectly happy to just like chill out. Like, oh, okay, I'll chill out by the window. Oh, okay, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Like, he's just so easygoing. So it's really interesting to learn their personalities as I'm bringing them inside. So I feel like it would be good to give them all some kind of a chance for an inside life. Like, there's no way that I am going to be able to keep all seven of them or any of them. I already have four cats. I don't need any more than that. So in a perfect world, I would be able to get them all adopted to good homes, potentially not just one at a time, but potentially, you know, at least in pairs. And then since there's seven of them, maybe three together, like two, two, and then three, that would be a perfect world. A perfect world would be someone taking all seven of them and giving them a really amazing home all together. That would be amazing. The reality of that is that I don't know if that would happen. The next best thing would be someone taking four of them and someone taking three of them. So that way they could all just kind of be together, almost all together. I mean, actually the next best thing from one person taking all seven is two people who know each other you know, splitting them up. That way they, they could actually see each other sometimes. But we have to see how it goes. You know, I want to bring them inside and see what their relationships are with each other. I mean, I had no idea that Sammy was going to be alpha over Richard. No clue. And if I bring another one in, what's the pecking order going to be? And what is the relationship going to be? Are they going to be closer to Richard, closer to Sammy? Like, what's what's it gonna be okay so they had everything on the platter and I'm gonna go inside if they finish off both of the traps then I might just give them a little bit more food it was quite cold out today and it's gonna be really cold tonight so I want to make sure that they have good calories I'm really happy that they're growing really well now that I've been feeding them they were so small and skinny when they first showed up Yeah, she almost finished everything on that plate. Good job, Goldie, good job. I'm trying to shoot through the screen, but can you see this? Sammy's laying on the day sofa where I was sitting. That's so cute. Here's Boo. Boo says he's not happy, he wants to eat some food. Hey, Sammy. Look how little she is, she's so tiny. How'd the pillow get on the floor? How'd the pillow get on the floor, Sammy? Did you knock the pillow down? You took it off the bed, you said you didn't want it. So, the issue with the day sofa here is that the camera that um, is set for the entire room can only see like the end of it. It doesn't really see who's laying on the bed, so I wasn't able to see anything. And this is what's going on here with the rug. So I gotta see. I'll look at the camera footage to see what happened there. Let's see if I could sit down with her. Can I sit down with you? No. She doesn't want me to sit down with her. So it ends up that she was trying to get out of the window. She was over here and I was outside and she was trying to get through here. So she, hasn't, she didn't move the screen and I doubt she moved the window because the, the window is really heavy. But she was trying to get out and she was like pushing this back. So eventually it fell off. How are you, baby girl? How are you, baby girl? Now we do have to remember that this happened to every cat. So Stella, Splash, Simba, except for Boo. And it happened to Ditto too, where, you know, they'd spend some time inside and then they want to go back outside. Um, I used to let um, Stella, Splash, and Simba out at like 5 a.m. just because I didn't want to be bothered. Like I used to sleep downstairs with them and then they'd 
you know, want to go out desperately around 5 a.m. and I'd let them go out and then I'd move to my own bed. But then, you know, after um, Stella and Simba were spayed and neutered, I was like, you're not going out anymore. That's it. No more. Done. You were done. And so it took some adjusting for them. So this is a natural process. You know, a cat that's lived their entire life outside as an outdoor cat is still going to have, you know, that um, daily rhythm built into them. Um, but the fact that I was able to, you know, get some decent sleep last night is really good progress. And, uh, you know, the next goal is getting them to pretty much sleep through the night, which I'm hoping for tonight because they've been awake almost all day. I mean, they got up late. They got up, you know, 11, 11.30 a.m. And uh, they've been awake pretty much all day. So let's hope that they actually sleep at night. And then that would be really good progress. So the reason I came into the room right now is because I'm putting some dinner together for them. All the other cats have eaten. Um, there's still food in one of the traps, but the platter's clean and one of the traps is clean. So if they eat the food in the other trap, then maybe I'll put some crunchies out. Um, obviously she's missing her sisters. And Richard is laying in her bed underneath the day sofa. So maybe because it smells like her, I don't know. So I'm going to go give them some food and just continue trying to make progress today. I just gave them their dinner. So they're having homemade raw food with some shredded chicken on top and some warm water mixed in. And she knew which one was hers right away. She's like, I'm purple. You're gray. Okay, let me move it over for you, Richard. Now he'll eat it because it's farther away from me. They should like their food. So once I put the new water dispenser in here, I might go back to feeding them communally. Like outside, I just put one platter down and they shared it. Here they have separate um, little bowls because those were in the trap with them. But if I bring a third cat in, I think it's just better to feed them communally. That's what Stella Splash and Simba did. They ate off of like one bowl or I could go back to a party platter. I think I still have some party platters downstairs. It's just usually easier to serve it than multiple bowls. Also, once I put the other water dispenser in, they don't really need these with the attached water. They have, I'm using the ones with the attached water now just because it's easier to use inside the trap. They're licking their bowls clean. The Lucky Feral School of Feline Etiquette. The Lucky Feral School of House Cat Etiquette. You want some crunchies now? You had your food, you could have a few crunchies. For dessert. You want some crunchies for dessert? Is he going to use the litter? Yeah, he's going to use the litter.
So if I if I move the trap out, I could actually put both litter here on the towel, and that should help um, with litter being tracked out of that litter box. But then I just realized I should put another towel or something under that litter box to help with the tracking. He might be making a poop. That sounded like a poop scratch. Someone's growling. I gave them each a few crunchies in their bowls. I think they're fighting over the cat bed. You have the other bed, Sammy. Go in the other bed. I gotta go get the cat now. I'm taking a bath. I guess I guess they enjoyed their dinner. Good job, everybody. Richard is such a nice boy. Richard, you're a nice boy. Very nice boy. Why are you hissing? Look at her toes. Look at her toes. Oh, is he gonna eat? Go eat yours. Go eat yours. Come on. Leave him alone. Let him eat. I put his closer to him so he can eat it. No wonder why he was the smallest one, because, you know, if he's the most easygoing, he's not going to get the food. The others are going to be like her, kind of bossy and bossing him around. But he's not the smallest one anymore. I think she is. Hey, he knows already. You already told him a million times. You told him a million times you're the boss. He understands that, okay? You can be nice. He's not, he's not trying to bother you. He's just trying to eat in peace. There's some beautiful fresh catnip growing in my geranium plant. Yeah, that's catnip. I'm gonna pick some. Maybe they, I'll let the inside cats have some later today. I might rub this in those uh, cubbyhole cat beds that I bought for the cats. Um, I might rub a leaf in there and just see if that attracts them. I just rubbed this catnip leaf on the two round cubby beds and then I said, where are the cats? So I looked under the day sofa. Sammy's back in her bed, totally happy, and Richard is in the new bed. So I'm glad they worked that out and uh, she probably kicked him out. Who's this? Who's this? Is this Ringo or little Eva? Why aren't they going in the trap outside? They must want more food. I'll put some more food out. So I took the plates out of the trap. Someone's smelling one of the traps. And now someone is eating off the plate that was in that trap. So the trap on the left is the old trap that was used for ditto. Now I did wash that and sanitize it, so hopefully it doesn't have strange smells for them. I'm gonna go give them a little bit more food on the other little plate, just so they're set. It's about 9 p.m. I just had some playtime with Boo downstairs, and I just came into the room with this wand toy that I found. Boo had a ball um, with um, one downstairs. I found two of these. Um, so I brought one up for the kittens, and I was gonna play with her. I was trying to. And she's like, there are no birds flying around at night, so I'm going to put this away for the daytime. She's been resting comfortably on top of the day so far. I just brought them some toys from my stash. So these are some Kong Naturals catnip toys. And they're like fish, but they're also birds. So they're like fish with feather tails. And there's two of them. And I thought the cats would like them because they are, they're kind of like mice. 
they're like mice, fish, and birds all combined. And there's two. So I thought, let me give these to the cat. So I have to take them off the packaging. She said she's ready. She's ready. I also brought them a snack. So I'll give them a snack and I'll give them some toys. And there's Richard. Richard was sticking his head out. Oh, Sammy's rubbing up against my back. I think Richard smells the catnip. He's purring very loudly. There you go. Hello. Hey, hey, be nice. Look at him. He's like a teddy bear. You're like a teddy bear. You remind me of Simba. You remind me of Simba. You want a, you want a toy? Okay. Listen, hey. You gonna be a good girl? Here, you want a toy? Here. Take your toy. Here. I give her the toy and I give him a toy. He has to come get it. She likes toys. He's smelling the toy. What is she going to do? She's going to think they're both for her. Listen, you have yours. His is blue. Yours is... Okay, he's getting it. All right, he's going to play with it. Okay, she moved over to her toy corner. And I gave her her toy. And I'll probably give her the stick again. I'll take it off the wand and I'll give it to her. Oh, look at this. He's good. He's looking. He's like, what do you got? Are you going to lay down? You don't want your toy? You don't want your toy? How come you don't want your toy? Going to go get your toy? She's sitting near her toy. I'm gonna give her the stick. Now she has her stick and her toy. Okay? You got everything you need? Richard, I'm sorry she's mean to you. I didn't know that was going to happen. He doesn't like the camera. They're splitting a small can of Pure Harmony wet cat food. It's salmon, ocean fish, crab, and shrimp recipe in gravy. Look at him. Want the food? He's having a really good time, and she keeps ruining it for him. So the kittens have had their snack, and They've had some playtime with those little Kong toys. And right now she's playing with that LED ball. She's been batting it around the floor. He's laying in her cat bed, the one she likes. And then I got a few of these wand toys at the Dollar Tree. This is the kind that Boo and Stella really like. So I was playing with them a little bit underneath the day sofa, but they're kind of like, what is that? They're a little scared by it, so I just took it out. I'll put it aside and they could play with it tomorrow. I was hoping to, you know, just kind of use up some of their energy. So hopefully they'll sleep tonight. They should because they were up most of the day today. This is the first day that they were pretty much up all day. I mean, he was, he had his operation yesterday, so he was out of it. Um, but he didn't really get any sleep last night. I looked at the security camera footage from overnight and 
yeah, he was moving around, he's trying to get out of that trap, and he was not happy at all. So I'm very happy that I put the security cameras on to see what goes on because, you know, I slept through it all. I had no idea what he was doing. Um, but yeah, he spent the entire night trying to get out of the trap, pretty much the entire night. Then in the morning, probably maybe around 6 or 7 a.m., he finally settled down. That's why I didn't want to wake him up uh, before I left to run the errands. I figured, let me let them sleep for a few hours and then give them breakfast when I came back. So hopefully they'll be good the rest of the night. Um, last night they woke up around 1130 and were demanding food, or she was. So we'll see what happens tonight. Maybe we'll be able to sleep through the night. He's relaxed right now. She's still playing. It's a little bit after 11 p.m. I'm giving the kitties a snack. I had um, a jar of baby food that I had opened for her the other day. It's some beef baby food. So I mix some warm water into it and give them a little bit of that. They're splitting about, I probably had about two thirds of a jar left. So I mix the water in and they're splitting that. So it's probably like a third of a jar each and a few crunchies on top. And she was playing with her toy when I came in. So she's been on top of the day sofa, she's been looking out the window and she's been playing with her toy. And there's Richard, he's been hanging out under the day sofa. He's been relaxing and sleeping. And there you go. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Eat your snack. He's a very good boy. He's such a nice cat. He's so calm and easygoing. The two of them are actually like complete opposites. So let's hope it's a quiet night. I just remembered that I wanted to give him a pom-pom because Simba loves the pom-pom so much. So I'm going to give one to Richard, see if he likes it too. You like your pom-pom? You like the pom-pom? You want to play with it? Here, ready? Here. You afraid of it? You want it in your bed? Here, ready? There's a pom-pom in your bed. There's a pom-pom in your bed. It's just a camera. It's just a camera. And here's Miss Sammy. She's playing with her stick. You like your stick? You like the stick? Okay, you relax and play with your stick. Okay, Richard, have a good night, okay? Sleep good, Richard. Okay, Sammy, have a good night, okay? Good night, Sammy. Good night. It's about 11.30. Look what's going on. She's having a good time playing with the toy. She took it on top of the day sofa with her. She's going crazy over it. That might be the first toy she's ever had. I mean, it most likely is. I mean, she had the catnip pillow, but this one is much more, you know, fun because it has the, um, the feathers and it makes like crinkly noises. So hopefully, She'll get some good catnip out of it and then sleep tonight. He's underneath the day sofa. 
he's much more relaxed. She's having a good time. If I didn't have the cameras in that room, I would have no idea what's going on, so I'm really happy to have the cameras. Let's see what Richard's up to. So this is under the day sofa, and I don't see him under here, so I don't know where he is. Unless he's, like, toward this way. I think that's him. I think he's eating crunchies out of the bowl. What is she doing? She's going crazy on the day so far. Yeah, he's eating crunchies. Like here, he's down here and she's over there. I want to see her knock the pillow down again. It's been off the day sofa twice. She better not be jumping up to get the camera. Okay, now she's over there. this Lucky Farrell's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos, and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.